In today's NBA, it's clear as water that Nike plays the more dominant role when it comes to shoes. However, it was actually Adidas who first had the opportunity to acquire superstar LeBron James. But what if I told you that one stupid mistake caused them to lose arguably the greatest NBA player of all time? This is the story of that mistake. Welcome to NBA Insider. Before we begin, I would like to give a huge shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. For those of you who don't know what SeatGeek is, it's basically the smartest way to buy and sell tickets to live events. You can use SeatGeek to find tickets to concerts, Broadway, comedy shows, and even the NBA Finals. SeatGeek searches for tickets all over the web, which means that you'll see far more results and find better deals than if you tried searching on your own, saving you both time and money. To top it off, you guys can use my promo code INSIDER17 to get $20 off your first purchase. Click the link in the description box down below to find out more. Once again, thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Enjoy! For the majority of the 1990s and into the early 2000s, Adidas had managed to insert its brand into the grassroots levels of basketball, causing it to become one of the most prominent shoe companies in America. With a promising future, the brand was set to take over the sport of basketball on all playing levels. However, in order to truly understand how Adidas even managed to become so popular in the basketball industry and come close to acquiring a player with a status such as LeBron James, we must go back to the man who started it all. Meet John Paul Vaccaro better known by many as Sonny. Born on September 23, 1939 in Trafford, Pennsylvania, Fukaro is often regarded as a godfather of basketball sneaker culture. He was the first man to introduce sneaker sponsorships to the nation's elite high school talent at an early age. When Sonny first started his journey in basketball, he was just a school teacher pursuing an interest. However, as he got deeper into the game, he realized that there was far more potential and opportunities to make an impact on the future of basketball. So after many years working as a sports marketing executive, Sonny made his way to the big league working as a recruiter for Nike. When he first started working for Nike, it was mainly a running shoe company. However, Sonny's vision was to make basketball a priority and help grow the business to levels never seen before. It all started back in the early 1980s when Vaccaro founded the ABCD All-American Camp which ran from 1984 to 2007. It was one of the premier basketball camps for the top high school players in the nation. Some alumni of the camp included Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Sebastian Telfair, and Dwight Howard. In 1965, Vaccaro also co-founded the Dapper Dan Roundball Classic, which was the first national all-star game where he first began recruiting players. This game hosted future NBA stars such as Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, Chris Webber, Alonzo Mourning, Kevin Garnett, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, Patrick Ewing, and much much more. Sonny clearly had an eye for talent. He was able to spot a gifted player from a mile away, and he didn't have too many problems attracting talent as his smooth talking, passion, and vision helped him recruit superstars from all over. On top of this, he would spend quality time with the kids instead of trying to impress college coaches. This solidified him as someone who genuinely cared about their future and gained the trust of both players and coaches. Sonny would also build relationships with high-profile coaches who would later on become his business partners. During the 70s and early 80s, Vaccaro signed these coaches to shoe deals that turned the feet of the top players into billboards and launched Nike's basketball business. By paying teams to wear Nike products and sending their entire roster sneakers for the season, Nike slowly began to build brand awareness with the powerhouse programs. After getting Nike shoes on the hardwood floors at major college arenas, Sonny's next challenge was to help Nike land a signature athlete. Nike initially wanted to go after all of the stars from the 1984 draft class including Hakeem Olajuwon, Charles Barkley, and John Stockton. However, it was Vaccaro who was convinced that Michael Jordan was the future and that they needed to go all in to make that deal happen. However, when Jordan left the University of North Carolina, he wanted to sign with Adidas, not Nike. But in 1984, after making some promises such as naming a shoe after him and paying him more than the competition, Sonny had signed Michael Jordan to his first sneaker deal, helping launch the most lucrative sneaker partnership of all time. In 1985, Nike gave Jordan his own sneaker line and the Air Jordan was born. It was that exact moment that Nike became the biggest sneaker brand in the world and Sonny changed the game forever. Overall, Sonny Vaccaro played a key role in shaping how sneakers were marketed 
at almost every level of the game. From high school basketball All-Americans to major collegiate relationships, Sonny was the godfather of sneaker deals in sports culture. It was his insight to find raw talent at a young age and get in the inner circle that allowed him to become one of the most impactful personalities in the industry. However, in 1991, when he was at the height of his career, Sonny was let go from Nike. The brand had claimed that he was bringing negative attention to the team with his questionable way of recruiting players. Luckily for him, the previous creative director at Nike, Peter Moore, had bought in at Adidas and quickly went after Sonny in an attempt to take a piece of Nike's business. With the support of his new employer, Vaccaro set out to find the next Michael Jordan but this time for Adidas. The problem however was that Adidas virtually had no presence in the US basketball market. So in the first big strike for his new employer, Vaccaro decided to sign his first big client who was none other than high school standout and recently retired Los Angeles Lakers shooting guard Kobe Bryant. Sonny discovered through Kobe's dad that he wanted to go straight to the league. By offering him a sneaker deal up front before his first game, it locked in Bryant's decision to go pro since the money would be there whenever he went in the draft. This outstanding accomplishment was immediately followed by the acquisition of Tracy McGrady. For the first time in history, Adidas was ahead of Nike in acquiring not one but two superstar athletes. They were now 2-0 in the recruitment wars. Everything was going good until one sunny day in Malibu, California back in 2003. Little did he know, Sonny Vaccaro was on the verge of reeling in his biggest client yet, a kid by the name of LeBron James. The two first met when James was a sophomore. After seeing him play just 10 minutes in a private game of scrimmage, Sonny Vaccaro had declared LeBron James to be the best high school player that he had ever seen. King James as we all know him today was a high school star being featured on major magazines and having several games televised on ESPN during his senior year of high school. His talent was no secret. Luckily for Sonny, LeBron James was already a fan of Adidas as he could constantly be seen wearing T-Max and Kobe's during games, both of which fell under the Adidas brand at the time. Knowing this, Sonny made sure that LeBron's team, St. Vincent St. Marie's, was outfitted in Adidas jerseys, sweatbands, and shoes. Despite this, Vaccaro estimated that LeBron was going to command more money than any other rookie in terms of a sneaker deal and assessed his value at around $100 million guaranteed. And it wasn't like Adidas couldn't afford it either. They still had Kobe Bryant and Tracy McGrady selling shoes for them. So Sonny decided to present his plan to sign LeBron James to upper management at Adidas who agreed to the terms of the proposed $100 million contract. After receiving clearance from the Adidas executives to present the offer, Sonny went to meet LeBron James and his mother Gloria. Upon meeting James and his mother for the first time, Vaccaro made it known that the Akron, Ohio native would be receiving a $100 million shoe contract over the next 10 years. What happened next will forever burn in the memory of Sonny Vaccaro and the Adidas brand. On the day Sonny had finally brought LeBron, his mother, and his lawyer to the table to sign the contract, everything was going good. However, one thing was missing. The $100 million guarantee in the contract that Vaccaro had supposedly gotten clearance for. Instead of a guaranteed $100 million, the Adidas executives had gone behind Sonny's back and changed the terms of the contract in which LeBron would instead only receive $70 million with incentives. After Adidas lowered its offer last minute, LeBron James just walked away from the negotiations. Adidas missed out on signing one of the greatest NBA players and to this day is still considered as one of the biggest mistakes ever made in corporate America. With Adidas missing out on signing LeBron James, this allowed for Nike to swoop in with a 7 year $93 million deal to land their future NBA star. LeBron James has been a fixture for Nike since 2003, helping the company earn over $340 million in sneaker sales in 2014 alone. Altogether, he has earned the company more than $16 billion in revenue since 2003. Next to Michael Jordan, there's no other basketball player on earth who's selling more sneakers than LeBron James. Because of this one simple mistake, Nike now owns an outstanding 92% of the market share in the basketball shoe industry and still continues to dominate. Sonny's relationship with Adidas was never the same, and Adidas lost out on its chance of signing what is arguably the greatest NBA player the world has ever seen. On top of missing out on billions of dollars in revenue, Adidas let the opportunity to control the entire basketball landscape slip through their fingers. Recruiting players such as Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry could have been much easier for Adidas if they had LeBron James endorsing their product. Instead, the company has had to shift their focus towards signing second tier NBA stars and heavily relying on their emerging lifestyle brand in order to compete. Decisions are key, and the recent struggles Adidas basketball has faced makes that fact painfully obvious. Before I conclude this video, I just want you guys to think about a world in which LeBron James had signed with Adidas. Comment down below what you think. Would Nike still be as big as it is today? Would Adidas have shoes as valuable as Jordan's? I guess we'll never know.